All right, so uh, welcome to EA Live. My name is Kendra Rainey, and I am the uh, brand and content lead at Edgar Allen. And I have with me today Michael Ferguson, who is our SEO uh, expert extraordinaire. And I am so excited to talk to him today about how to build an SEO-focused site from day one. And I would say that that is the thing. You know, how do I make sure that you're you know you're redeveloping my site, you're replatforming it? Or, um, and, or alternately, I don't have a website. I want to make sure that when we start from solid ground on SEO, or if you're a person who already has a website or a brand that already has a website, let's make sure that we preserve the good work that we've already done. How are we building a foundation of great SEO that we can build up on? And so I've got a couple of questions for you, Michael, and we'll kind of let this go where it goes. But uh, I guess the first one would be, you know, what are some... You are the first SEO person I have ever worked with that has been adequately able to, A, explain to me what SEO really is and does on a practical level, and also uh, kind of change my opinion of uh, SEO driving certain things, because it always felt like writing for robots. It always felt like, you know, that was what was expected of me as a writer, that, you know, I, that humans didn't really matter. We just need to get people to engage. And you're the first person, you, you have a perspective that is different that I would say than most SEO folks that I've known. And I really appreciate that. So I want to start off by saying that. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> but um, I guess, I guess along with that question, like what are some, I had a lot of misconceptions. What are some common misconceptions people have about SEO and their website? So there the, the are like a few, like there are a lot of misconceptions about SEO because it's not like a widely understood science. And I think that that maybe like intimidates people or puts them off of it or makes them shy because or shy of it because they don't really know but like my top three i think would be the first is that like seo is this like magic wand it's a one sort of thing that you just do um and then you check in on it every once in a while and you'll immediately rank like number one on google for like all these keywords that you're targeting optimizing a website for search engine ranking is something that needs to be looked at on a regular basis um from multiple angles um an seo strategy isn't a one and done thing uh and it's a never-ending process google often makes changes and uh it will then often make changes and run updates to different algorithms um, and rules. So if you're not paying close attention to what Google is doing and what the trends are, then you run the risk of your site being left behind. So like that's sort of the first misconception. And then the other one that comes to mind is that like what companies, organizations think are valuable keywords to them um, versus what are the actual keywords that are valuable are like very, very different. So like that, there's that concept of like keyword research that a lot of people don't understand where you might think that this is our keyword and this is great, but then you do a little bit of research into it and it's not actually bringing in as much traffic as what you what you thought it was. And then there's actually an alternative keyword that's a lot better. So that's another misconception. And then another misconception is like undervaluing the importance of content, which is which speaks to your point as well that you made earlier. Content really is king. Um, it's not just this um, hot topic or buzzword that like marketing gurus throw around it has been king for a very long time and it still is for now um so it's important to understand that your content is a tool to speak to your audience um that tells your brand story but with the correct seo your content will find its audience a lot easier um sometimes when people hear seo content they think that that's the soulless kind of content that's like written to appease robot overlords um, at google headquarters but it's actually like not true uh, and content is not just a written is not just written content on a page. It can also be like image galleries, videos, which also require search engine optimization. But my job, I feel as a search engine specialist, is to find that sweet spot, that marriage between content that is organic and speaks to an audience, um, but is also optimized for Google. And it is very possible to do that. Well, I know that, yeah, content is definitely king. Content is one of those things that is going to certainly drive a large amount of your SEO. What are some of the other things that are inherent in a website specifically, just the structure of it, the way that it's planned, the way that the back end works that is that are important to get right um, beyond that that content play, which is, I guess I think of that as like one kind of avenue of SEO. And then there's the site itself. Yes, there's, there's, the, there's the site itself. Like, there's a lot of aspects to SEO. It's, it's never just about the content. Yes, the content plays a large role, but you've got to look at your site structure overall as well. So I've always maintained that, like, when you want to implement a website, whether you're starting it, whether you're in the middle, or if you've got an established brand, or whether you're just starting out, 
it's very important that the SEO specialist or the SEO team works closely hand in hand with the developers. Because I've seen that a lot over sort of like the eight, nine years experience that I've had in SEO is that there's a lack of communication between development and um, design and also like the SEO. So right off the bat, you're going to look at a site map and you're going to decide what the URLs are going to be for this web page. And your URLs need to match your keywords. So it doesn't help that like you've got this language that you speak as a brand where, you know, instead of like contact us, it's like a reach out or get in touch, whatever the case is, that doesn't make sense as a keyword. So it's important to marry sort of your keywords to your URL profile of a website. And that's kind of like where this all starts. Um, so yeah, from a functionality aspect, that is uh, definitely one of the things that you, you that you should focus on. Um, and yeah, like a lot of people also like, they think that like SEO is something that you slap on the back of a website. Like you develop it and you've got it out there, but that's a big mistake. Like SEO should be involved from the very beginning. Um, a strong keyword strategy is also vital, but that's less of a bold thing. Like again, it, it, it impacts the book. So you should actually start with like a good um, keyword strategy and do that research and then have it influence the bold like that. And they can, like heads can, but sometimes, but I, I find that like with good communication, you can really um, end up with the best possible website that you could also do. Totally. And I'd say, you know, from a, from a content perspective and from a brand perspective, uh, at least, you know, we see, we see sites as a, a whole package at Edgar Allen. I mean, that it, it starts, it's more than, you know, building a great SEO focused site is really about more than just SEO tasks, like those things that you're talking about, the link building, the keywords. It's also, you know, I mean, SEO itself is just, tell me if I'm wrong here, but it's really just a way for search engines to measure and quantify how appropriate or good a site is for a specific group of people that are looking for a specific thing, right? Um, and, and so they can just, you know, so they can attach a value or a priority to it. And so really good, appropriate sites are human focused from the start. They know what their users need and, and they give it to them and they're clear, they're informative, they have high quality information and they have an experience that's easy to use and it's always serve audience first rather than brand or company first, right? Um, you are 100% and, right. And so I think that starts at, at having a really well thought and articulated brand. Um, it doesn't stop there though. You also have to create a site that translates that into an audience experience that meets their needs and answers their questions and, and leads them deeper into the site to connect with that brand. And for us, we do that through kind of, you know, having, well, for one, being a shop that does brand all the way through build and there's no handoff there. We're not, you know, sending brands, we're not having brand strategy come from a different team and sending it to a developer. There's, there's le le less chance for disconnects, but we also, you know, there's this discipline content design, which is just all about seeing content as a design element about working more than audience first. I'd say working like audience always and looking at a user as a person on a journey and asking, you know, over and over again, how we meet them at the front door. What are we giving the opportunity to know them next? Were they expecting what might delight or uh, pleasantly surprise them and then get them to do a certain thing, whether that's, you know, a sign up or tweet about us or buy a thing, right? And also circulate around the site and come back. Yeah, exactly. And like, I think again, when you want to come back to misconceptions about Google, like a lot of people think that it's like an input output process. Okay, cool. If I use these keywords and everything, like, you know, I put this into Google that, that that's exactly like, I'll get, I'll get results, but that's not actually what Google does. Um, Google has entire algorithms that they've constructed based on how helpful content is. Um, and they've got goals that you can reach as a organization, a business, a charity, whatever it is that you have a website for. Um, you know, like you can, you can get into, um, what's called Google snippets and that is a direct result of how helpful your content is. And if your content's not human, if your content isn't speaking to a person and wants to take them by the hand and lead them on a journey, then, um, that, yeah, I mean, that's what Google's looking for basically. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I always, uh, for a long time when I, when I had less of a good understanding of SEO and maybe when SEO was a different animal, I, I used to kind of rail against this idea that we were writing for robots. And really, we're not doing that anymore. We're not creating sites for robots. We're creating sites for humans because the robots are trained to recognize that. Exactly. Because the, the robots are being used by humans. 
at the end of the day. So they did like, it's just it's, it's a lot of what like search engine optimization is, is understanding human behavior. And that's why that, that human connection and that human content is so important. Um, look, if you look at things that they were doing, like maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, it was very much what you've just described, like input output machine, like these things, and like the things people used to do on, on the website, like it makes me want to scream now, but we've come a long way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so true and so grateful that we have, <laughs> um, I mean, and, and we, you know, as I was saying, we kind of, you know, try to knit that picture together, um, at least on our team, uh, by ensuring that brown brand foundation, which honestly, like, that's one of the things that always bothered me about brand and brand to build stuff before, uh, we built Edgar Allen was that I worked at a, a brand focused shop that did some web. So those two halves of the business, like really didn't communicate very well. Um, brand, if it's done well, really considers audience heavily. Like you are digging into like, what do these people really need? What do they want? What are they feeling? What's the, you know, um, what's the thing that they're trying to achieve by, a, you know, by solving a problem that your company can solve um, and making sure that that's, you know, not just lost in translation between, you know, that that PDF deck at the beginning of the, of the, of the, the project and the website at the end, it's kind of a Herculean task. So we do it by, you know, first being that team that works brand through development, um, no handoffs to another group, but we also do it in our process through really thoughtful audience research, interviews, desk research, looking around to see what other companies are doing. Um, also looking at, you know, where people are talking about your brand in the world. What are the problems that they're, uh, coming across? What are the things that they think could be better? Um, we also do it by partnering content designers and UX designers, uh, to think through the audience's eyes sort of at every point, you know, um, what, it, what's their mindset when they come to that front door, what do they expect or what do they need to get next? What do we want them to do? What's the floor of kind of the flow of the story that we're it's gonna lead them to their destination and that's tied to brand and then what decisions should we make about like format like what's on the page is it copy is it imagery is it bullets is it maps is it video you know what is it and so we're always like thinking about that like literally like every component on the page is a consideration in that story so um no definitely and like i love hearing you talk about brand like like every time like we come on a call and like you discuss brand and like content like my mind gets blown um but that's also what i enjoy about working with edgar allen and like the wide sort of um variety of clients because like i also feel like when you do when you start looking into search um and and these brands specifically like you actually learn a lot about the brand when you look at what people are searching for before they land on that website and sometimes like you find really unexpected things and sometimes it's like really touching and sometimes it's like really interesting. Like, you didn't think that that would be what it is at all. And like that's also part of why. Yeah, we, that's, yeah. you know, that's all connected. But um, so there's a lot of uh, different platforms which you can build a site. There's, there's Webflow, which is the one that we build in uh, most often. There's things like AEM and WordPress and HubSpot and Wix and Squarespace on that sort of consumer end of things. I, I've often wondered, sir, is there one platform that's better than another for creating a well SEO optimized site. So like I've only really ever come across like a handful of platforms that were like a nightmare for SEO and like a lot of them don't exist anymore. So like that's probably for the best. Um, if I were looking for a strong platform for SEO, I would want something that's like super user friendly, um, customizable and adaptable to the ever changing needs of SEO. So you basically need something that like you could just go in and make the changes that you need to uh, go in and make. Um, and that platform needs to be accessible to anyone across the business, no matter sort of like where the skill level is at working within a CMS. Like, so from your SEO specialist, you should be quite adept at CMS to, you know, like a content, a content designer, um, so that they can access it, find what they're looking for and correct the things that need to be corrected or make the changes that need to be made. Um, I'd want something that doesn't like require a master's degree to operate and Webflow is a fantastic option, um, for a strong SEO platform or CMS that, um, not only meets my criteria as a SEO specialist, but also it has like a mountain of resources for users, uh, to draw. Um, Webflow has a plethora of tools dedicated to SEO and is developed to take SEO, uh, needs into account. Like they provide users with like fine tuned controls, high performance hosting and flexible management 
products. Um, and what I like the most about it is that like Webflow empowers anyone who wants to make search engine optimizations to a site, which I think is the important thing. Um, like other SEO web features uh, for Webflow, like they provide the like simple tag and metadata editing, which is really important because that, that's something that you've got to go in and like we've got all the time as the metadata because Google constantly changes things when it comes to metadata. Also, your keyword strategy might change on a dot. And then you need to be able to go in and make those changes and those edits really quickly. Um, there's indexing and sitemap control. There's full schema markup control. And like what I also like about Webflow specifically is that like all these tools remove the need for like a, a million different plugins. Um, mm. So that's really helpful. But what I did want to say is that it's also important to remember that SEO is about much more than just the CMS uh, that, that a site is using. Like what kinds of tools are being used to monitor the SEO performance of that site? Like are you only using a few tools provided by Google, like uh, Search Engine Console and Google Analytics? Um, if so, how well do you know how to use those tools? Like have you done Google certification for them? Are you invested in paying for tools that help track SEO performance? Like uh, AHA, Surfbox, uh, Surfbox or Lots. I um, mean, so, you know, how well do the people at your organization understand the data provided by these tools? And do you understand your website's backend profile? So that, that's what it comes down to. You you want like a really good content management system, which I firmly believe Webflow is. Um, yeah. Like straight off the bat, as I came in, I knew where everything was. Um, if I had a question, it was a really quick fix answer. And it, it's just super, super useful. That's, that's great. And, and. You know, as you know, we're we're very kind of all in on Webflow here um, for a lot of reasons, but that's that's actually one of them. You know, accessibility is another. That democratization of you know that when you talk about it, actually and having some being able to have people in there that are non technical um, and being able to easily do the things that they need to do. That's another benefit. Um, all right, so let's say you have a site already and it's got great content, and you've got an SEO strategy in place of some sort. How and you're looking to you know redevelop that site? How do you how do you start? What are some benchmarks for for creating a you know that foundation of good SEO that you can move forward from? So, like first and foremost, I think that I think that a good website is one that is always evolving within like business and industry needs, as well as with Google itself. Using tools like Ahrefs to run site audits on a regular basis can help identify errors that need to be fixed in order to maintain like good standing with Google. Um, and the Google search algorithm. These errors can include like metadata being too low or short. 404 errors, redirects that have not been like implemented correctly, missing old text on pages, um, multiple H1s on a single page, or page not having like enough HTML content. So that's like basically your 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 standard um, maintenance of the SEO on the site. So like having good maintenance on the site um, it, it is, is a good way to like improve your standing uh, and make sure that your, your bases are covered. Um, you can also make sure that you're producing a quality content on a regular basis and having a content strategy or schedule or calendar is, is helpful to do that. Then another way is to just stay up to date with the latest trends and updates from Google. Like that's really important. Um, it's good practice to update all the pages on the site to make sure the whole site remains compliant with Google search essentials. Um, and this is true for your core pages. So that would be like your home page or about us page as well as like blog pages that you might think are like inconsequential, uh, you, you should like update those ones as well and just make sure that everything's running correctly as far as like Google is concerned. And then also like I, I would advise being on the lookout for like opportunities to add new types of content to your site and make sure that like you've got like good uh, diversity in the types of content that you're creating. Written content is great, but like what are you doing about like YouTube um, video content because like that's also something that people tend to forget is that Google owns YouTube so YouTube videos are your friend when it comes to content um, and like what kind of location based content on you generate are, are you generating that can be used in line with like Google Maps um, you know and if you've got like a, a, you know if location is an important thing to you as a business if you're a restaurant or um, a, a doctor's office or whatever the case is then like you're going to want to be on Google Maps and have content that like marries well with that um, like are the images on your website optimized for Google and like Google image search results? And um, also is your site set up properly to make the best out of like Google reviews? So that, that, awesome. that kind of base is all covered. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a lot of stuff. And I, I want to ask you the opposite question now though, which is how can a brand fail to create a site that's, that's built to support good SEA? I mean, what would be missing? So like doing all the wrong things. Yeah, what are all the wrong things? Uh, okay, so like obviously, like in my role, like I go through like a lot of sites, 
um, and a lot of different sites for a lot of different businesses. And one thing that I find often is that like metadata is overlooked by a lot of organizations. And that's kind of like a cornerstone of what like SEO is. Um, it's, it's an advert for your, um, organizational business that's like out there on Google. So obviously you'd want to make the most of that real estate, right? Um, so allowing your metadata fields to just autofill from the page instead of customizing each field with the correct keywords and the correct content in the correct places or like allowing to just auto fill is a big mistake. Like you've really got to curate that content to make the best of your metadata. And um, I see this often with clients and organizations that I've worked with in the past, ranging from like large businesses to small ones. It's something that a lot of people overlook. Um, having your site just be like one giant page. This was a popular trend a while back, but some brands um, are still guilty of it. Um, you need a proper sitemap layout with lots of different pages that serve unique purposes um, and that do different things. Uh, this provides the brand with like the opportunity to create SEO content on each of these pages that will help the site rank as a whole. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you remember those sites, but it was just like one giant page. Um, I do. And then having and it, was, it was also in like the, the parallax days where everything was like, yes. <laughs> like, like I'm not saying that that kind of stuff doesn't have like it's time and place. Like it can be used really, really well in articles and stuff like that. But to have the whole site is just one page is a, is a big mistake. Um, and this is where like, I suppose Webflow comes in again is like having a user friendly, um, CMS, uh, with like good templates, um, that are like super customizable because if your content, like if your templates haven't been set up correctly for SEO, it's an issue, but like, I'll luckily like Webflow does a lot of that. Um, and it's really like interchangeable and like, it's really user friendly. You can do anything. Um, so making sure that your content is written in HTML is also vital. Um, images are beautiful and can be helpful tools, but you can't have the majority of the copy of the copy on a page that is actually just a giant image or banner because it will mean nothing to Google. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen that in sites. Nothing so. I, I'm, maybe I've seen it, but I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> so, you know. I, I've seen that. Like, I'll, they'll take, like, I'll write all this beautiful copy and then convert it into, like, a PDF and then upload the PDF uh, into the site. And then they, Google can't read that. So, it, like, it means, it means that. I have seen that. But... Yeah, but you're definitely like customizing your templates, um, and, and like just making sure that your HTML is, is, is in place. Um, and then setting up URLs correctly from the very beginning is also a common issue that I come across. Um, if the URL doesn't match the content on the page, it can create like a long lasting impact on the rankings, um, for that page and make any kind of future optimization very, very difficult. It's, it's most helpful to do like the keyword research before page is built. Uh, or create it to ensure that you can include like targeted keywords in the URL. Because I've seen that also in like you'll have a company and they'll put like a product and then they'll have a product for this page. Uh, I mean a page for this product and then they'll just decide to change things up but then they forget to change the URL and then that page just loses all of its uh, its ACO potential. Um, and then like at a brand's conception and this is also something that I come across, um, it's helpful to do research into what the name of that brand is going to be. Firstly, to like avoid any copyright issues, but secondly, to ensure that the brand's name is not going to have to compete with anything else that's already well established on Google. Um, so if this isn't done correctly, it can like, it can be close to impossible to rank number one for your brand term, which uh, like is incredibly important to go on a search traffic. Um, and I've seen like examples of that as well. So it's good to just like have a little bit of foresight before thinking, um, before you sort of create those pages I'd with the brand name. How do you deal with that for a brand whose name is also the uh, the same as a 19th century poet? I do not want to call this out. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, so so here's the thing. Like, we actually do incredibly well. Like, if I could have renamed it again and, like, anything else, like, I probably would have, like, as far as, like, the search engine person in me, like, wanted to rebrand. But, like, it's also, like, it's, it's so, like, who we are. And we actually don't do badly as the, the, the search engine specialist for Edgar Allen as well as their clients. Um, we, we do pretty well. Yes, it's competitive. There is keyword um, volatility that's involved. But we 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 rank. We rank for our keywords. Yes, we don't rank for Edgar Allen and Poe, which we shouldn't anyway. But we, we do end up competing with Edgar Allen and Poe. Um, which I call that a win. <laughs> it, it's a win. It's a win. It's, it, it's, I think it's a good place to be. I mean, I, like our brand's memorable. Like people, like it sticks with them because of that as well. So it's not always um, a, a bad thing. But um, what I did want to say is that like, because we have good SEO, because you've got like a person looking up to you, me, um, <laughs> we, we, we do rank in the top three for our brand term most of the time. 
So it, it's, it's a not case study within itself. That's pretty great. That is a case study within itself. There are things, there are things that can be done that they won't be easy, but it can be done. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then lastly, sorry, to that point, um, yeah. is just making sure that your website is responsive. Like that's really important as well. Um, Google, Google like desktop rankings and Google mobile rankings are looked at differently. So you might rank like highly for a search term on desktop, but you might rank lower for that term on um, mobile. So like if you own a new site, for example, that ranks number one for search term on desktop, that's great, but it's also vital that you rank number one on mobile because that's where a lot of, that's where most people, I think, read their news is on their mobile devices, their tablets, their phones. Um, and you obviously want to get the, 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 the best rankings possible from both desktop and mobile. One last question, um, in, in this line of questioning, at least where, where is SEO going? What should people be aware of coming down the pike? And what do you see the future being? List in the so future? I, part of my job to like, keep like my yeah to the ground on, on these trains. Um, and like chat GTP has kind of like upset the apple cart for lack of a better term, but Google. Google is the company that's always changing and they're always innovating. And I'm, I mean, like I read an article the other day that was saying that like this chat GPT thing, it's not really new. Like Google was developing it before they kind of sold it to somebody else. Um, and they are like, people also mis, not misunderstand, but they forget that like Google works on a lot of AI technology. They've got rank brain. That's the AI. Um, that is also constantly learning from its users. Um, what I, I do see changes coming. I think that they're going to like try and realign themselves and make, make their searches. It's going to be a culmination of things. So like, you're going to, you're going to put a search term into the search bar and you're going to get like TikTok videos that are ranking. Um, and it's going to, it's going to look a lot different from just your standard, like here's the ad and then like, here's the first result. Um, it's, so I think it's going to look different. I think they're going to like so, sort of like amalgamate things and it's going to be a combination of um, text results and image results and video results and location results and review results. So I, I, I kind of saw that that's where they were going. Um, that might change. Things change all the time, but I don't, I don't see Google going away. I don't, I, I, I was actually having this conversation the other day with somebody and I'm like, you know, you can have this amazing AI technology. If it's not marketed properly to people who could use it, um, but basically what I was saying was, okay, cool. You've got chat GT, chat GPT. Does your average like housewife know about it? They don't yet. Okay. But are they, are, are they in the loop enough to learn about this? Whereas if you look at a product like Google, it's already in people's pocket. It's already so much part of we, we identify with Google as a brand, something to consider. I mean, you can walk around with an Apple phone, but it's got Google apps on the Apple phone because that's how much Google is part of our lives. So I don't see it going away. I just see it changing with us as we grow and we change. Okay? Well. Thank you so much for spending uh, some time talking about this with me today. This is something that uh, we are constantly thinking about and constantly learning more about as, as we see and uh, changing the way that we work our process and kind of doing better and trying to also, you know, personally trying to outrank Edgar Allan Poe on the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah, we get, we do a damn good job. Okay. We're out there. We're in the top three results. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, Michael. Uh, appreciate it. Um, and you can also read uh, more about our thoughts on SEO on our blog at edgarallen.com forward slash blog, uh, in addition to a whole bunch of other stuff. So thank you and uh, see you next time on EA Live. Cheers. Thanks.